Damselflies belong to the insect order Odonata, suborder Zygoptera. They're a very important trout food source at all times of the year because they have up to a two, sometimes three year life cycle before they fully mature and hatch into the adult damselfly. So in our tank here, we've got juvenile damselfly nymphs uh, that are gonna hatch next spring in the adult. So damselflies are very fragile uh, swimmers. They unulate sinusoidally through the water, but they spend most of their time hiding amongst the vegetation on the shoal on the edge of the drop-off. Because they're not fast swimmers, they're very susceptible to being eaten by fish. So they hide amongst that vegetation and their coloration will match the habitat they're living in. So you'll see quite a range in, in damselfly coloration, the nymphs, uh, from yellows to soft uh, browns, uh, olive green to dark green, and even magenta colored. All depends on the habitat they're living in. So they live amongst the vegetation on the bottom of the shoal and drop off. So we're talking about water from anywhere from a couple feet deep all the way down to about 20, 25 feet in depth. They have an incomplete metamorphosis, egg, larva, or nymph, and the adult stage. So you're looking at nymphs right now. When the nymph is fully matured, it will swim off the bottom out of the vegetation up on about a 20 degree angle to within about three feet or a meter of the surface of the lake. And then they'll swim horizontally through the water column till they reach some vegetation, some emergent vegetation like long stem bulrush or cattails. So vegetation that's rooted in water and then protrudes up through the surface film. The nymphs reach those stems of vegetation underwater, climb up the stems, climb up out of the water, and then their outer shuck dries and the adult damselfly emerges out of that previous damselfly nymph stage. The damselfly adult takes several hours sometimes for the body to become rigid and for the wings to become rigid enough so that they can fly away. Once the adult is able to fly, then it'll spend the entire summer and fall flying around, feeding, mating. They like to eat chronomid adults or midge adults, and they like to eat mosquitoes. They're, they're, uh, in, insect, they eat insects, but they're basically meat eaters. But when the first frost comes, that usually terminates the rest of their life. So damselflies are an important food source as a juvenile or immature nymph for up to two years, and then a really important food source usually in the late spring, early summer months when the nymphs are fully matured and doing that nymphal migration to the vegetation to emerge as the adult. Always a great pattern to have in the boat. Damselflies live on the shoal in amongst the vegetation. So again, we're talking about water five feet deep to 20, 25 feet in depth. As nymphs, they hide amongst the vegetation. And so trout can go into the vegetation and pick off the immature damselfly nymphs or the mature ones prior to any emergent swim to hatch as the adults. But really what gets the trout focus is when all those mature damselfly nymphs are ready to emerge into the adult stage and they swim off the bottom of the lake up to within about three feet or a meter of the surface of the lake and then swim sinusoidally towards some long stem bulrushes like we have over here. And so those nymphs then crawl up at the stem to hatch. So they're high in the water column when they're migrating and there's lots of them in the water. So a floating line works great. So I've got a, a 12 foot leader on uh, that ends in a five pound tippet. And uh, I've got a damselfly nymph on. And the way I fish this, We've got this beautiful long stem bulrush. That's what they love to uh, emerge on. So they're swimming up. That's, that's what area they're heading. So I'm just gonna bomb a long cast out there to, uh, and let that fly line just drift a little bit and get her down, let it sink, 
so it's down about three feet so not waiting very far or very long and then I'm just doing a continuous hand twist retrieve like so pausing every once in a while and then picking it up the flies when they're swimming they swim short distances maybe two or three feet then they'll pause uh, rest and then they'll pick up again so just moving it through the water like so okay so the key is understanding or remembering that when damselfly nymphs are on their migration swim to hatch that they're high in the water column and you'll look over the side of your boat and you'll see damselflies swimming third week of June, second week of June into July, or you'll pull your anchors to move and there'll be down to fly nymphs come up on your anchor rope. Well, that tells you those nymphs are on the move and they thought your anchor rope was a piece of long stem bulrush, so they're crawling up it to hatch into the adult. So again, a floating line's great, uh, or a s intermediate sinking, which is a very slow sinking line, it's sink rate of about one and a half, one to one and a half inches per second because uh, you want to fish high in the water column but again it's it's the uh, floating line is a very good uh, fly line of choice for fishing the damsel migration when you want to imitate fishing the baby damsels or juvenile damsels like in the late spring or, or uh, early fall late fall period you can fish them with a floating line under a strike indicator on the shoals and in that situation you're just casting it out onto the shoal, letting it wind drift a bit, watching that indicator, and then giving the indicator a twitch once in a while. And they'll grab that damsel just as it's suspended um, just off the bottom of the lake. So again, remember you're pegging, you'll peg your damsel fly nymphs so that if you're in 12 feet of water, it's hanging down at 11 feet, 11 and a half feet, close to the bottom. So damsel flies, another great uh, food source for trout in productive still waters. Mm -hmm.